Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today I'm doing a manga haul. This is manga that I received in the month of August. Um, if you have been keeping track, that means I didn't receive any manga in July. Kind of amazing, um, since that almost never happens. Uh, maybe once a year I don't receive manga some month, and this is that month. So um, I'm just going to talk about manga that I received in August. Um, I do have a lot a lot, a lot of manga on the way. Um, it's sort of up in the air, anyone's guess when that stuff is going to arrive. Um, I do have a couple of pre-orders on Amazon. Sorry for the noise outside, I have to have the windows open, it's hot. Um, I do have some pre-orders on Right Stuff. Right Stuff, unfortunately, is not releasing the stuff as it's coming out. They're actually holding my purchase until all of my pre-orders have been released, which I think is up into November now. The last uh, statement I got was that one of the books that I was waiting for has now changed the release date till November. So I probably won't be seeing that uh, that uh, package until the end of the year. I do have another big purchase that I'll talk about when it arrives, but it is basically um, all out of print titles and it has depleted my entire budget for the year. So I'm not going to be buying a lot more manga for the rest of the year, but I do have a lot more to share with you as the year goes on. Um, I do have a couple of, of course, rules for myself if I'm going to let myself um, buy some more manga. You know, my, my main budget is pretty much depleted, but I am willing to go into other aspects of my budget for very specific criteria. Um, those criteria are, they have to be from a very small indie publisher, um, so someone who has a very small print run and isn't going to have that manga available for me in six months from now. So I want to make sure that I pick up the titles as they're available. So indie publishers are still on my list of things that I will be buying from. I'm also going to be um, buying from secondhand bookstores if they're a good price. I don't go to secondhand bookstores themselves very often, but if I happen to be in one and I see a book in there, um, it has to be for a good price. But I just wanted to give myself the allowance to do that. I'm not likely to just go to bookstores just because, especially knowing that I don't really have the budget for it. And then the other one is that I do do that uh, secondhand sale. Um, it happens a couple times in my city if they hold that sale within now uh, or between now and the end of the year. Of course, I'm going to let myself go to that. I am going to try and restrain myself a little bit, but it is sort of an opportunity to pick up titles that I don't normally see or I am looking for. and. Um, if you look online, people are trying to sell you or trying to gouge you into the hundreds of dollars where I could buy that for three, four dollars. So I definitely want to make sure that I go to that sale um, on a regular basis every time it's held, just because um, it keeps my collection from being uh, ridiculously expensive. It doesn't make any sense to me to be spending that much um, when I don't have to. So I am going to let myself. Um, go to that, but um, apart from that, I'm not going to be going to bookstores and buying manga. Um, I might buy other books and stuff, but that's a different budget, and I'm not going to be buying from any of the big publishers um, before the end of the year, probably, I hope. Anyway, that's the plan. Um, but I do have a lot of manga on the way, and hopefully I will be very good at just being patient and waiting until next year to pick up anything that I want. But uh, today I do have manga to show you, and uh, some of these are manga that I bought myself. Um, recently I made a purchase on Amazon, so I will show you those titles, um, mostly because I was buying my sister a birthday present, and of course I had to throw in a couple of titles that I was looking at that were well enough priced on Amazon compared to other places, so I wanted to make sure I picked those things up uh, periodically when I make purchases there. And then I also um, recently got a donation of manga from a friend of mine. So she was uh, visiting home from Japan, she's just home for a couple of weeks, and then back uh, to Japan to teach English. She's been there for several years, so um, it was good to see her, but also she was cleaning out her, sort of her storage that she's had here for many years, all of her stuff in boxes, and was able to clean it out before she goes back, um, and was offering it to a number of her friends. So she did offer me her manga, which I took, um, and so I'm going to show you the titles that I got from her. Um, I'm not going to show you everything she gave me, this is only about half of what she gave me, um, about the other half I think I have in my collection, um, so I don't really need to share with you 
those, um, but I will share you anything that's new that's being added to my collection, and um, it's it's pretty nice stuff, so I'm I'm pretty happy with it. And as a couple of her um, things that are doubles that are coming into my collection are better condition than the ones that I have, so they will be replacing the copies that I have originally, so that's also really nice. But um, yeah, it was it was nice to see her. I was really happy to see her, but also it was great to get some new manga, um, particularly when my budget is completely uh, overstretched and I don't want to spend money on more new books, so it was great to be able to add to my collection without spending any money. So that was really super nice and kind of her. Um, so I'm going to just go through and show you what I have to add to my collection today. So starting off with the manga that I got off of Amazon, I have Kitaro the Vampire Slayer, this is by Shigeru Mizuki, and then I also have Kitaro's Strange Adventures. I am just sort of picking up the remainder of the Kitaro books that I haven't already purchased. I think there's one more still on the way. Um, these are really cute uh, curations of uh, Gegege no Kitaro, and um, I've been really enjoying them. I love Shigeru Mizuki's art style, and the translations are really great in these titles. So I have been really enjoying reading through these, and I'm glad to finally be putting these in my collection. Um, these are ones that I ended up picking up on Amazon. I don't normally pick up sort of um, bigger publishers' works on Amazon because I know that I can get them for cheaper uh, during a right stuff publisher sale, but this these are Drawn in Quarterly titles. Uh, Drawn in Quarterly is a small comic book publisher in Canada, um, and I definitely want to make sure I pick these up, because I know that they're not going to be on sale somewhere. Um, I'm not going to be able to get them for a good sale price, so I um, definitely want to pick them up when I had a chance, and um, these are really nice books, so I'm really happy to have these in my collection. Um, the other two things that I got from Amazon are both non-fiction books about manga. The first one here is Passionate Friendship, The Aesthetics of Girls' Culture in Japan by Deborah Shamoon. Shamoon. Um, this looks like mostly research, um, you know, it's just very text-based research on uh, girls' um, print culture from the 20s to the 70s. Just sort of a survey of print culture, um, the development of girls' culture, the ideas of girls' culture um, in Japan. So I've been very interested in reading this book. I've had it in my cart for a long time. Uh, I can't remember who I saw talking about this. Maybe Simply G was talking about this. Um, and I definitely wanted to pick this up uh, sooner rather than later. So this is my collection now. It's a pretty short book and it's actually much smaller trim than I was expecting. So. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty quick one to fly through. I'm definitely interested in the topic, so I definitely want to be more informed about girls' culture um, in general, and I think this will be a great book. And then the last, uh, and then the last book that I got from Amazon is this um, pretty chunky little um, survey of manga art. Um, this is by, let's see, uh, Amano Masanao and edited by Julius Weidman. Um, it was published by Tashen, and I did, I was recommended it by someone on Twitter who was showing me some of the pages, and I thought, oh, you know, it doesn't look too bad. It was only $10 on um, Amazon. I thought that was a pretty good price for something that could potentially be, you know, like a decent book. Unfortunately, it's just garbage. Um, apart from the art in it, I think that the art pages are quite nice. Um, they're produced pretty well. Let me see a page that I can actually show you. Maybe I can show you that. So they're high gloss pages. Uh, most of it is black and white manga art. It's basically a page of introduction um, about an author. You can see the author's name, a little paragraph about their work, and then a couple pages um, of their examples of their art. Um, unfortunately, the text um, is just nonsense. Um, a lot of it is not factual. Um, it does read like basically that, that all of the research was entirely taken from Wikipedia, which as you know is not a good place to research, um, and it's also absolutely excruciatingly poorly written. It is so bad. Um, if you took the text away, if you took this hideous cover art away, I would say probably a decent book, probably worth ten, ten bucks. Um, so I probably am just going to use it as uh, scraps. I just don't know uh, any reason to keep this together um, as a book in my collection. I think I am just going to use the pages and cut them up. I 
it's it really is that bad. I did write a rather long ranty review about it on my blog, which I will link up down below. If you're interested in reading, you can definitely go and check it out. The remainder of this pile is all from my friend, so I'm just gonna go through it and let you see what she gave me. Uh, so the first thing I have to show you is this collection of uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth. So this is the large trim format from Mix Comics, and Mix ended up turning into Tokyo Pop. So there are many, many published editions of Magic Knight Ray Earth, and she happened to have the complete collection in this oversized uh, Mix edition. So I do actually have volumes one through three already. I think I purchased them last year or the year before. Uh, I don't think it was much longer than that, and I actually bought them um, locally from someone who had advertised online from one of her best friends here. So I thought that was quite funny because the other books that I have are from her friends, so I have these. Um, and then additionally I have these three volumes. So I have volume four, volume five, and volume six. Um, these, as you can tell, are flipped editions. I don't know how the translation compares. Um, to any of the other editions. I'm assuming it's the same as their non-flipped editions, but it is really fun to have uh, some more other formats, other editions of uh, similar titles. Uh, definitely gonna check it out and see how they compare. Um, her books are in pretty good condition, so I'm glad to add them to my collection. And it's nice to complete the series since I only had the first three before. She gave me volume three of Barakamon um, by Satsuki Yoshino. This is published by Yen Press. Um, I have been curious about this series. I probably will have to buy volumes one and two before I read this one, um, I, which I'm not upset about at all. I was definitely curious about it beforehand. Um, this, I think, is a sort of a slice of life, kind of calm type story about a guy who's fairly aloof and goes to, I think, uh, an island, and there's lots of kids and they like to play with him. That is the amount of knowledge I have of this series, so I definitely will check it out, see what it's like. Um, hopefully I enjoy it. She did give me a couple of Japanese volumes, so I ended up getting volume 6 and volume 7 of Yotsubato by Kiyohiko Azuma. I actually have Yotsubato in Japanese already. I think I have volumes 1 through 5, so this actually just continues what I already have, which is fantastic. So I'm really excited to just uh, keep going with the series. <laughs> um, I, you know, of course, have it in English as well, but it is nice to not have, you know, massive gaps adding to your collection. So I was really happy to see that this just follows what we already have. She gave me a volume of Natsume's Book of Friends by Yuki Midorikawa. This is volume 15. I have like volumes, oh it's right here, volumes 1 through 7 and 17. So definitely good to fill in the gap a little bit, so happy with this. I got the Tokyo Pop edition of The Voices of the Distant Star, Hoshi no Koe by Mizu Sahara and created by Makoto Shinkai. Um, of course, uh, Vertical recently published this. I still have not read it, but uh, interesting to see another release of it, the old release of it. Um, I was always curious and interested in picking this up and then never did and then I was unable to. So I was very excited when Vertical picked it up. Um, since I haven't read it though, I'm probably going to sit there with both books open at the same time and check out how the uh, translation compares. Um, I just think that would be a really interesting way to read this book, so especially since it's only one volume I could do that fairly easily, so I think I'm probably going to do that now. Another Japanese volume, this is Tiger and Bunny by Mizuki Sakibara, or Sakakibara. This is volume four. I haven't read or watched any of Tiger and Bunny, so this is completely new to me. I don't really know anything about it, um, but that's fine. I will add it to my collection. Happy to do that. Uh, she gave me a little sampler, as you can see. It's actually All You Need Is Kill by um, a number of authors, including Obata, I think. I think this must have come in a magazine by Shueisha. Uh, so just the Japanese sampler of the series. Of course, I have the series in English already, so this is just sort of a cute thing to add to the collection. A uh, volume of Juvenile Orion, Aquarian Age, by Sakurako Gokurakuin. Who is that the same author as? Oh, 
I feel like it's something that I used to collect and I was really happy with it. Probably starts with a C. I feel like it starts with a C. <laughs> anyway, when I figure that out, because I know I have it in the collection, I will put it up on the screen. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I'm drawing a blank, but I definitely recognize this author's name. This is uh, volume two. It was published by Broccoli Books, so definitely out of print. Not super easy to find, but well bound, like Broccoli Books tend to be. I don't know anything about this title. Um, and then she also gave me this um, OEL, which is called Red String by Gina Biggs. So this is volume one. It looks just sort of like a cutesy romance. A romantic tale of destiny and self-discovery. Um, it looks pretty much like OEL. I don't know anything about the story, though. Now, my friend has a little bit of a thing for Clamp, so a lot of the books that she gave me were from Clamp, um, including X, Crescendo, I don't even know, is that the title? Is that the subtitle? Um, this is, of course, a work by Clamp, uh, published by Viz. I do have some of this series already, but I think most of the volume she gave me I don't have, so she ended up giving me volume 8, volume 12, volume 14, volume 16, volume 17, and volume 18. So it's great to have a little bit more of the series. Hopefully one day I'll actually be able to read it. She also ended up giving me Tokyo Babylon, which of course I think I star the same characters as in X. Um, you know, Clamp likes to reuse their characters, but I think this is part of the same storyline if I'm under the right impression. I haven't read either of the X or Tokyo Babylon. I've seen a little bit of X the anime, but uh, none of Tokyo Babylon, so I am kind of working in the dark here. Um, so I have volume one and two already, but she did have a few more volumes, so she gave me what she had. Um, I have volume one here, volume two, volume three, volume four, volume five, volume six, and according to the back, uh, volume seven, which is the final uh, volume. So it looks like I have the complete series now, which is fantastic. And these are particularly nice covers with their the solid color and then the way the spines look. This is a really nice looking set from Tokyo Pop, so good on them for for this series. She also ended up giving me Clamp School Paranormal Investigators. This is illustrated by Clamp, but the story is by Tomiyuki Matsumoto, and um, these are actually light novels, although marketed as manga novels on the spine here. Um, I didn't even know that these were novels, even until I took them home and started flipping through them, because I thought they were manga the whole time. Um, so I'm happy to add these to my collection. Definitely interesting to have some more clamp titles in the collection. Um, and an interesting little thing. Also, uh, they do have a, a fairly decent amount of art at the back. So there's a couple of pages um, of manga illustration um, at the back, a little chapter. So I'm happy with that. A couple of illustrations throughout the story. So I ended up getting volume one, volume two, and volume three. And then the last thing that she gave me is probably one of the nicest things that Tokyo Pop ever published, and that happens to be Clover by Clamp. So this Clover is really similarly published to the Japanese release of Clover, um, uh, which I have as well. And when I saw this, I thought it was the Japanese release of Clover. Um, it has this, it has this um, book jacket, which is sort of a mylar jacket, which you can see um, lends itself to sort of a translucency. And then um, the book itself is an iridescent green around the cover, so it just adds a really nice look. Um, these are really attractive books. So I ended up getting volume one, volume two, volume three, and volume four. And I believe this is the full series. It's not a very long series. What I have in Japanese is only three volumes long, so um, maybe I'm missing a volume in Japanese because I only had gotten those at a, like randomly at, at one of those secondhand sales and just picked them up because they were really cheap, like a dollar. Um, and I also have it uh, published in an omnibus from Dark Horse. It's a great title. I definitely recommend checking it out if you want to read something. It's a little more experimental. Definitely the layout, the style of it 
is um, more what it's about even than the story. And the story is, is interesting in that it uh, reverses back, so um, it goes back in time as the story progresses, which is very interesting. Um, this, again, is a, a series that has been flipped, so the order of the reading is English reading order, um, which also I want to definitely check out because the way that this is stylized, the way that the panels are laid out is so significant in the manga that, um, you know, flipping the manga, I think, would really make a different manga. Um, so I definitely wanted to check out this reading experience. Anyway, that's it for my video. If you have read any Clamp titles, let me know what your favorite one is down below and let's chat about it down there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye for now.